Welcome to On Networking. Conversations with thought leaders in networking technologies. Hello, I'm Jeff Doyle, and we're here with Kevin Wallace. And Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Um, and I'd like to start off by just asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, uh, I've been in the Cisco networking world for quite some time now. I actually got into it back in the late 80s. Uh, I went to work for a university thinking that I was going to be their PBX administrator because my background had traditionally been in voice. My degree is in electrical engineering focusing on digital communication systems. But to my surprise, they didn't have any Cisco routers when I first showed up on campus in about 89. So I had to build a Cisco network campus-wide from scratch and I just fell in love with working with Cisco equipment, the routers and the switches. Did that for many years. Eventually got uh, my dream job down at Walt Disney World in Florida. My family and I were huge Disney fans so I, I got to participate in the project uh, doing a lot of the design and physically interconnecting the, the connecting of the studios and the Animal Kingdom and Epcot and the Magic Kingdom. That was just an amazing experience. But now I've uh, been doing a lot of instructing uh, since, uh, well for about the last eight years or so. I've uh, been working with uh, Skillsoft, formerly Thompson Net G, formerly KnowledgeNet, where I teach courses primarily in the voice track, but I also teach about three or four of the courses in the security track and one or two in the NP track as well. So I try to, try to keep my hands in all the different technology areas. Well, speaking of the security track, I believe uh, you had some information that you wanted to tell us about uh, CCNA and um, new directions in security there. In fact, this is the first day that I'm allowed to talk about it. It was a <laughs> it was a big hush hush secret, but we're we're recording this at uh, Networkers at Cisco Live, and this morning in his keynote, John Chambers introduced the fact that there was now going to be a CCNA security, and that's called a CCNA security concentration. And with that security concentration, students, they don't immediately have to jump to the SP, the CCSP professional level certification. They can just kind of wade into the water. Now, there's a prerequisite. It's not, well, I'm going to go down the security NA track as opposed to the, to the router track. Mm -hmm. To get that security concentration, you first have to have your regular CCNA, I guess we could call it. Uh, and uh, just to remind our viewers a couple of ways if they could achieve that. They could take individual exams, ICND Part 1, ICND Part 2, or there's a composite CCNA exam that they could take. But assuming that they do have that CCNA level certification with one more exam, they could suddenly become a CCNA security. And there's a course that goes along with that. It's a brand new course, uh, the learning partners are just allowed to talk about it as of today. It's uh, called IINS, Implementing Cisco IOS Network Security. And as you might guess with uh, the title IOS Network Security, it's going to include things that you would expect to find in an IOS environment dealing with security such as IOS based firewalls, IOS based IPS, IOS configuration for site to site VPNs. Actually, a few things you might not to, not expect to see in a in a security course at the NA level. We also talk in that course about securing SANS, storage area networks, in addition to securing voice. So some of the NA students that might not have a lot of voice background, it, it kind of gives them a taste of the voice world as well as showing them how to how to better secure that voice world. So in addition to the coursework, um, you know, and it's a question I get asked all the time about mm -hmm. uh, various levels of certification. Um, and just from your experience, uh, particularly teaching, uh, I know you get a lot of the same kinds of questions, but uh, do you have specific recommendations for or strategies for um, preparing for, uh, for the, uh, um, the CCNA, whether it's just the CCNA or CCNA security? Maybe right. especially the security part. Sure. Uh, focusing on, on the security part, uh, I'll, th I'll mention it while I'm thinking about it. Along with uh, Michael Watkins, uh, I wrote or co-authored a book just on CCNA security that is available as of uh, as of today. And we tried to try to make it very exam centric. It's the exam uh, official exam preparation guide. So what we did as we we're going through and writing the theory about all these different security concepts, we we added a few features. We have key topic 
icons. So as we're going through and here's something that's really relevant, something that's very certification worthy, we point that out. And a lot of this is going to be memorization to the to the associate level candidates are getting in. So we've also on a CD included some memory tables. They can be printed out. It's it's like a, a blank Excel spreadsheet, and you might have a concept or a term with a place for them to to fill in. What does this mean? So it's we're not just giving them a bunch of multiple choice questions that they could practice with. We're actually making sure that they have an understanding of that. Now, not to knock multiple choice questions, we also have a CD containing or on that CD we have 300 multiple choice questions to help them better prepare for that certification. So if someone asks me how should I prepare for that CCNA security track, well I don't think there's any replacement for, for classroom instruction. We're certainly going to be teaching that at Skillsoft where I train. And as an addition to that, sometimes maybe as a supplement to classroom instruction, or if someone does want to tackle it on their own, um, I'd recommend they go check out the, uh, the book that I mentioned written by Michael Watkins and myself as they start down this security track. Uh, once you have that certification, mm -hmm. um, where does that position you in, in your career um, as far as what you can do with that certification and, and maybe what, uh, what should they then consider for next steps in certification? Right. Well, what Cisco did with the uh, with the associate level certifications, they announced three of them today. There was voice, there was security, and there was wireless. And I was on one of the calls that Cisco did where they were explaining their strategy for this. And uh, I love their reasoning behind this. They say, we want you to come out with the NA concentration, be it security, be it wireless, be it voice, and we want you to be able to completely do a job, maybe in a small business environment, but we want you to be able not just to do the first part of an implementation, we want you to be able to complete an entire, maybe a smaller, but an entire installation. So with the basics of security, they're going to be relying at this level a lot on the graphical interface. Cisco has a great product called SDM, the Security Device Manager. So as we instruct students in class and in the book I was mentioning, they're going to learn through that graphical user interface how to configure VPNs, how to configure IPS, how to configure iOS based firewalls. But you were asking where might they go from there. So once they have that valuable introductory level certification, they can then start pursuing if they wish the SP, the Cisco Security Security Professional, or rather the Certified Cisco Security Professional certification. Mm -hmm. In fact, this course, this exam we're talking about, it is going to become a prerequisite for the SP coming up soon. Now, I don't want to panic anybody that's watching this and say, I've already started down the old track. I've already taken SND, which is the, the, the Securing Cisco Network Devices course. They're already pursuing the old track. That's actually still going to count for quite some time. I think it's around June of 2009 where that's, where that's going to become invalid. The SND course itself is going to be phased out, I believe, in November of 2008. And, um, the way Cisco has positioned this, they're restructuring the way that the SP is going to work in terms of some of the some of the different choices. You get to take some electives. They're going to mix that up just a little bit, but the SP is going to have the prerequisite of the security CCNA level. Similar with voice, the voice professional, it's going to have the prerequisite of the voice CCNA level certification. So I think this is going to position them for the security professional and some people they might even want to take that to the expert level with the CCA security certification. That's great. It's great advice and uh, and Kevin I'd like to thank you for joining us today um, and uh, and for taking the time to, to share this information with us. Well it's my pleasure. Thank you. For more information visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.